Just like humans at rush hour, bats leave their caves in a mass exodus, at first in a great crush and later at a trickle. I uh, stood around outside of many uh, caves when bats came out. That's part of my job. And in all those times that I've stood outside the bat caves, I've never seen two bats crash into each other. They come very close, but they never crash. How do bats do it? Mueller and graduate students are parsing the mechanics of bat echolocation to discover their secrets. Well, sophisticated bats uh, speak through the no nose, not through the mouth. Around the nose there's a little megaphone, and while the sound is coming out of the nose, the walls of this megaphone are in motion, so they're twitching all the time. And then the sound travels out, the echoes come back. When the echoes come back, they're received at the ears, and again, the ears are not hanging statically on the sides of the head, but again, the ears are in motion while the sound is impinging on them. Some bat species live in dense thickets, which they fly through at breakneck speeds without touching anything. Natural environments, say dense forests, pose a big problem to human navigation, say to drones that want to fly into those. If you have an underwater sonar and you are in a shallow water environment with a lot of structure on the seafloor, you encounter just the same type of problem. And that the only difference is that the bats can solve it and our naval sonars cannot yet. The sonar heads enable the researchers to better understand what the bats are doing. The result could improve communications in the world's oceans. Bats show us that these problems can be solved. For Outreach and International Affairs, this is Andrea Brunet reporting.